Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring choose your membership rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 4th, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week. Without a doubt, there are big moves happening in the sky now. Now, I absolutely love how Venus is speaking in harmony with Mars early in the week, in harmony with Jupiter at the end of the week. This says that there is an energy here of passion and motivation and desire, but also happiness indulgence a sense of awareness of how love and wisdom is playing out in our lives or at the very least a motivation to see it which can go a very long way at the same time we have mars activating key eclipse points happening at the beginning and end of the week towards the early days of the week it is mars activating the upcoming eclipse point of june 10th and that is going to bring powerful foreshadowing this is the universe setting the stage for these changes and breakthroughs coming up right around the corner it is at the end of the week though that mars is going to activate the previous eclipse point of mid-december 2020 and this is going to bring clarity and closure as well to the events that have already taken place it's going to help us to understand and be empowered through understanding However, with all of this happening, I do think it is what else is happening that is going to get more of the attention that's very much on the surface. Now, part of this is because the sun is gonna meet Ceres in the sky. Ceres is an asteroid and Ceres is the Roman name for the Greek goddess Demetra. If you may remember the Greek mythology around Demetra, she is the mother of Persephone and Persephone ends up going into the underworld with Hades, also known as Pluto. And when she leaves, Demetra as goddess of seasons uh, begins to mourn, has a longing, wants to be with her daughter. Uh, and ends up not tending to the land and this explains how the earth grows cold it explains the fall and winter months and so the gods end up negotiating a deal where persephone will spend six months of the year with her mom that's the spring and summer and six months of the year in the underworld with pluto so this mythology uh, demonstrates to us some of the key attributes of Ceres herself. On the one hand, she represents fertility. She represents abundance. That's what the land being fertile is symbolic of. But on the other hand, she can also speak to that sense of wanting to be genuinely nourished, wanting to be cared for, wanting to give care. And that can bring with it vulnerability. And so there's this heightened sense of vulnerability happening in the second part of the week. Now add to this another layer, and that is Mars speaking in a conversation of tension with Neptune. And this tension tends to happen, and this conversation tends to happen about once a year. And when it does, it can represent a time where on the one hand, we are feeling as if our emotions are uh, flowing, okay? So it can feel not necessarily very stable emotionally. But remember, Mars right now is moving through the sign of the mind, moving through the sign of Gemini. And this is a part of the sky that has to do with communication of all kinds, expression, what it is that we believe we are uniquely meant to express in the world, what we're meant to share. It is a very spontaneous part of the sky. I like to think of it as associated with synchronicity. So synchronicity is being in the right place at the right time, meeting the right person, and it just makes all the difference to us. Well, there may be that expectation of that, there may be heightened expectations around that, there may be a sense now of us trying to find the right words but not really knowing what to say. There may be a sense of us being aware of how our own thoughts can shift and change. Remember, Neptune is god of the seas. This is the tides rising and falling. And so it can feel as if our own thoughts rise and fall. And that's why for so many of us out there, if you know that perhaps you are a sensitive soul like myself, and you may be given to some emotional ups and downs, which does happen to sensitive souls, it's a good idea to practice self-care and to be very diligent with your thoughts in particular now. 
there are certain habits that we can integrate and practice and these habits ultimately allow us to focus our minds and in focusing our minds experience a greater sense of calm and so that is the real opportunity here that is the potential here to actually be open to being willing to learn about ourselves, how our minds work, how it is that we can focus ourselves and experience benefit as a result. I do believe that so much of what we may experience emotionally can sometimes be habitual. Now that doesn't mean there aren't genuine things that people feel very deeply and there aren't genuine reasons to be willing to sit with what we feel. But there are times when perhaps we can call this not necessarily very grounded, but there are times when we may not necessarily be seeing things and perceiving things accurately and where we have to be very diligent to look for love and wisdom, to seek out and seek to understand how it is and where it is that love and wisdom is playing out in our lives now. So that is the real opportunity here to put the habit of looking for love and wisdom into practice because that habit will be rewarded very well. That habit will be rewarded thanks to Venus connecting with Jupiter. Thanks to Venus at the beginning of the week, connecting with Mars as well. Now you add another layer to this at the end of the week, almost simultaneously as Venus connects with Jupiter, Mercury, planet of mind, moving through the sign of Aries, the sign of the will, the sign of determination is going to be speaking in harmony with Saturn, the energy of discipline, the energy of dedication, a deep dedication, a deep persistence. And what this tells me again is that the motivation is there to focus ourselves, to focus our minds, to understand what really matters, to harness the will in a way that's intelligent, but also has an eye towards the big picture, towards the long-term future. Indulging certain emotional or mental habits can be addictive. It can be so alluring to allow ourselves to go on that journey, to go on that roller coaster. But the thoughts and emotions that we indulge can end up having a very high cost. I like to say for every high, there's a low, no matter what that high may be. Now, the great thing about being somebody who is sensitive or emotional is that you get to live a more richer experience as you move through life. And what that means is, yes, you get to feel things deeply. You get to engage happiness that much more deeply as well. But that means sometimes that we have to allow ourselves to know and to give ourselves space and self-care for when those lows are going to come as well. Sometimes we may experience that within the context of a day. Sometimes we may go through larger phases of life where we experience this sense of being more high than other phases, being more low than other phases. And that's part of what we may see now. This is a quick moving energy. It is the energy of Gemini. And so just as quickly as those emotions rise, they can fall as well and we can be taken on that little bit of a journey. But there is a middle ground. There is us asking ourselves if it is worth it. Is this journey worth it? Is the high worth the low that I might have to pay? And if we can at least be honest with ourselves in that split second moment sometimes, then we're making our choices consciously. And then we're consciously choosing the experiences we want to have that much more fully. Some highs are absolutely worth it. You think about the highs of life that, can, that life can sometimes bring to us, how rewarding it can be to allow ourselves to go to those highs. But sometimes not so much. With a square configuration, we may not necessarily know, is this a high or is this a low or what's happening? It can get to that extreme, but mostly I do think because it's a square and squares bring motivation, squares bring questioning, squares bring harnessing, squares are necessary to get things done. If you've got all trines, which is supremely harmonious energy, if you've just got all trines, you're going along for the ride basically. And the ride can be quite nice. But when it is a square, you're asking yourself important questions. It's that little bit of a break that we need. And so harness the energy of the square so that you're asking yourselves the questions as to whether or not the high is worth it, whether or not this low is really something that is low, or is it just part of the journey towards greater love and greater wisdom to you or not? And if we can do that, that questioning it and of itself is very very powerful self-care. 
And that really is how we end up making the most of this time. And so all may not be as it seems on the surface. This is Mars in the sign of Gemini. I have to say, and I have to be honest, of course, Gemini is the energy of what we're talking about, as is Mercury, the energy of what we're talking about. I love that Mercury is being supported by Saturn in harmony because it does suggest grounded perspectives, being thorough, looking at evidence. But if we just look at Mars and Gemini squaring Neptune, the information we're getting or what we're talking about may not necessarily be accurate, maybe uh, overindulgent, maybe taking huge leaps. So again, give other people around us uh, a little bit of a break. Be mindful of over-promising. For all that though, that beautiful Venusian energy is gonna invite us to bring us back to heart, bring us back to heart. Now, I do want to very quickly talk also about Mars activating eclipse points. I touched on this in the very beginning. So it is at the very beginning of the week that Mars is going to move over the upcoming eclipse point of June 10. We are going to have a powerful solar eclipse on June 10, right around there, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. Now that eclipse, that's coming up June 10 is going to be hand in hand with Mercury in the sky, the ruler of a Gemini energy eclipse at that. And so it really is going to be about new information, new connections, new conversations coming forward for all of us in at least one area of life. It's like the penny drops, if you will. There's that expression that we use to say, you get it. Just like that, it comes together. And that's what we're gonna have happen in mid-June. However, Mars activating that upcoming eclipse point starts to put things into place. This is where when we get to mid-June, if we look back, we can say, oh, wow, it was that week when Nadia said that the activation was happening. That's when the universe set things into stage or that's when I knew that's when you would know on an intuitive level, perhaps what could be coming up for you. So. I'll give you an example. If you are a Pisces, now I, I spoke about this and I do speak about this in the Superstar Horoscopes at NadiaShahSuperstar.com. And it is at that website that for as low as just $3 a month, you get expanded exclusive video scopes. I talk about that at the beginning of this video and after the forecast as well. So I spoke about in this week's video for Pisces, for example, about matters of home. So this is buying, selling, moving, new roommate, having Mars here activating an upcoming eclipse. Well, eclipses themselves can be very dramatic. They can change things in an instant. But if you're paying attention to your life and you've got a Pisces rising or a Pisces sun, or maybe even a Pisces moon as well, then this could be where you start hearing, you know, your roommate starts saying, wow, it'd be really cool to move to another city. Like, they might just be a very casual comment that they make. Or it may be where you hear about some new uh, project that's happening, uh, new houses that are being built, a new complex being built, and you go, wow, that could be really cool. I think that might be something I might be interested in. Now again, Mars is squaring Neptune. All may not be as it seems on the surface. Because Mars is squaring Neptune and this energy is active all week, that means it's also squaring these eclipse points as well. However, if we can pay a little bit of attention, be a little bit mindful, I think that this can be a powerful time because this is where you may trace back and realize that's when I heard, that's when I got the flyer, that's when I got the insight that I needed. So I'll give you an example from my own life. I remember the late, great Donna Van Toen, one of the great astrologers to ever live, accomplished author, just a brilliant person. She was, as I like to call her, the goddess of the Soda Conference. Uh, and the Soda Conference was a regional conference that took place uh, while she was alive in the Buffalo region. Uh, sometimes it was in Southern Ontario. So it was right there near the US Canadian border. And it was uh, at this event, my very first astrology conference in 2006. And I remember talking to her and she was standing next to a table. And on this table were a bunch of flyers. And the main flyers on this particular small table were oriented around master's programs, these new MA programs at established universities that were centered around um, astrology. So this was the very first year that these programs were being uh, launched and I looked at those flyers and I don't know if I felt like that's for me or I'm gonna do that or wow this is something but I remember taking those flyers and pouring over them and pursuing them and that's what ended up leading me to graduate school 
which wasn't even on my radar up until then. And so that's what I mean when I say pay attention to your life. See where life and your intuition is taking you because it will end up guiding you to what that upcoming eclipse could be for you. And so powerful foreshadowing taking place that I think is so meaningful. And solar eclipses especially, they are all about putting us on brand new pathways that ultimately align with our karmic promises we make to ourselves. The promise we make to align with greater love and greater wisdom is part of the mystery. That's what solar eclipses do. Now, if you're paying attention, that move can feel more gentle than it might otherwise, but if we're not necessarily paying attention, then solar eclipses can feel rather dramatic. So this is all about information that's gonna be coming up with that very powerful solar eclipse. And this is the foreshadowing, this is the prompt, this is the intuition, letting us know which way the energy could be going for us. Now, at the end of the week, with Mars activating the previous eclipse point of mid-December, now a whole lot was going on in mid-December, if you remember. We had the Great Conjunction, right? Also called the Star of Hope, the Star of Miracles of Jupiter and Saturn. We had uh, Mars moving into its final square with Pluto as well, right? As part of the larger Mars retrograde season. Mars was direct, finishing up shadow, but making its third and final square with Pluto. So now here we are. We are activating in the midst of all that of December, the eclipse that took place. So it may be hard to sort of separate what was what, but in at least one area of life, there would have been a beginning and a very Sagittarian beginning, meaning one with a lot of hope, with a lot of possibility, um, with some excitement as well. So now with Mars activating that eclipse point, we will get a chance to evaluate. Where are we now? Did we initiate that beginning? How far have we come? What is the universe showing us about, not only what was, but how to now navigate even further? Where is it that we can further empower ourselves to make the most of that solar eclipse energy that took place towards the end of 2020? How can we make the most of it? That's what this powerful Mars activation of this previous solar eclipse is going to show us. In one way or another, all of us were invited to make a change or to be more honest or to start fresh, to let go of the past so that we could live more fully. That is part of the Sagittarian vibe, living more fully in the here and now, living more fully and embracing life and all that life has to offer with all its incredible experiences. That is the promise of the Sagittarian energy. Every sign has a core energy, a core principle, a core gift to give us. And Sagittarian energy gives us the gift of exploration and adventure and a life well lived. Gemini energy, which is also highlighted very powerfully here, is the gift of understanding, the gift of communication, of connection, of mind, and the freedom that comes from being spontaneous. And so we've got this powerful activation happening at the end of the week under the light of Venus speaking in harmony with Jupiter. Jupiter being the ruling planet of Sagittarius. And what that tells me is love for the journey, love for the adventure, love for the exploration. Harnessing the will with Venus in Aries. Aries gift is owning our power, taking action in support of our power, knowing that we have a will, that, that being able to exercise our will and our agency is a great gift of being a human being, that we can move our lives in the directions that we choose. Now, what does it mean to bring love and wisdom into that journey? That's what Venus and Jupiter are trying to show us now. And this is happening under the light of this eclipse activation. Well, it tells me that all of us, in at least one way or another, are gonna be invited to embrace this beautiful journey of love and wisdom and take on some spirit of adventure. That adventure has already begun, but now to be empowered by it, to be changed by it, is the strength of this time. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here. It's a powerful, powerful astrological time and a beautiful astrological time at that. It is one of those moments that invites us to consider our karmic journey. Now, as I wrote about in my book, The Universe is Wise and Loving, I talk about karma and how I believe, and the language I like to use around it, is that our highest karma is to align with love and wisdom. What is love and wisdom? It is our essential nature, our essential truth. It is the, if I may say the word God, it is the God energy within us. That is what love and wisdom is. Some people like to call it God. Some people like to call it the divine. Some people simply call it love. Whatever it is, you are it. 
And a big part of the human journey is remembering this essential part of ourselves, to fully own it, to embrace it, to embody it that much more fully as we move through life. We're never gonna be perfect in this. We're human for a reason, because we're learning how to do this. And it is eclipses that in very powerful ways and in mysterious ways are a part of the journey that we promised ourselves we would undertake towards this full embodiment of love and wisdom. And so we have now eclipse activations, furthering an understanding, further empowerment, further clarity around what your unique journey towards greater love and greater wisdom looks like. And as part of the mystery, you are in alignment with it, even when it doesn't feel like it. You are moving towards it. And look, with Mars square Neptune, it really might not feel like it. <laughs> and yet it is there. Remember next week, and I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way, we are gonna have a new moon in Aries at the beginning of the week. We're gonna have Mars trying Jupiter. Just when you think you're not sure and it's all a, a fuzzy, rose-colored glasses uh, experience, just when you think you don't know, just when you think you're disappointed or disillusioned, genuine hope will come. It is right around the corner, but we will glimpse it now. And it is about being willing to at least observe our own thoughts, observe our own mind, that genuine empowerment can be found. And that is part of us exercising our will as well. Some of the best of what it means to be human. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys and to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorites. Thank you so much to everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, shares, thumbs up. It means so, so very much. Thank you for your love, your trust, supporting the channel my gratitude to you always and of course if you want to know how all this stuff this week speaks to you and your sign log on to nadiashawsuperstars.com at Nadia Shaw Superstars, you can now choose your membership rate as low as just $3 a month. And $3 a month gives you access to all the weekly video scopes for all signs out there. So 12 signs, weekly expanded videos, you get access to instantly as low as just $3 a month. Higher tiers get you things like class passes, consultations with me, all superstars also get access to a monthly uh, live party event that we do together. So everyone is welcome in the superstar space expanded exclusive video scopes and so much more unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more at nadiashawsuperstars.com link in the description below and i look forward to meeting you there synchronicity university speaker series is coming up and this time it worked out so that we've got huge stars as part of synchronicity university and who is coming well these very big stars include rachel schwartz one of the leading experts in the world on kabbalistic astrology and we've got stormy grace now stormy grace is of course a youtube star she's going to be teaching on magical mercury retrograde akutya is for nightlight astrology and he's going to be teaching on mystical saturn we have got armand diaz my friend who's written books on the astrology of breakups he's the world leading expert on astrology of breakups he's going to be teaching along those lines and my friend the great Samuel Reynolds he is going to be teaching on lunar nodes so we've got these very popular topics things that people absolutely love with some of the most brilliant minds in astrology today as low as just five dollars a class the unheard of rate of as low as just five dollars a class would choose your tuition rate that's on now and for another oh four weeks less less than four weeks to go on that and so if it is that you would like to join us check out synchronicityuniversity.com link in the description below and i look forward to celebrating these incredible astrologers with you at synchronicityuniversity.com synchronicity university michael barwick is back with us and he is going to be teaching a very hotly requested very popular topic a five-week course on traditional techniques traditional astrology techniques now that's very exciting i have his interview ready but i didn't uh, post it yet so you'll get more details on that this week but yes michael barwick is one of the great astrologers of our time and he's also one of my very dear friends and you guys have requested traditional astrology so much and i really thought he was the perfect person to teach it because not only does he give you the academic background not only does he give you the technical background in a way that you can use right away no matter what level of astrology you're at but 
He also helps you to understand how to fit it into a 21st century mindset and frame. So it's very exciting to have him back. This is someone that was widely requested as well by students who took his last class, Celestial Superpowers, which was fixed stars in astrology. So please join us as low as just $5 a class. Taking a traditional astrology class for that low a price is pretty unheard of. I haven't heard of it before. And so it is gonna be Michael Barak who's gonna be teaching this. If you sign up now before the end of the month, just $5 a class for a five week course. So he's gonna be talking about temperament, debilities and joys. He's gonna be talking about the Arabic lots or also known as the, the Hellenistic lots or the Arabic parts. He's gonna be talking about essential dignities. So these are very core understandings of how we've come to understand the planets and especially the ancients understood astrology and practiced astrology. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun only as Michael Barwick can teach it and you can learn more. You can get detailed understandings of what you're gonna learn and learn more about Michael as well at synchronicityuniversity.com. Sign up now, link is in the description below. I've got my own classes coming up with synchronicityuniversity.com as well. Coming up this Saturday, we're going to be looking at the fourth house part two, tenants, which is planets in the fourth house. Whether you have this natally or by transit, you can understand something about what planets in this house can mean for you, what core energies you bring to understanding home, to understanding your past. I call this reckoning with your past, understanding your ancestors, your roots, and so much more. We're going to explore that together at Synchronicity University. So you can sign up for that now. Other classes coming up this spring include the astrology of accusations and scandals, include the galactic center, uh, include additional classes on the seventh house, on the third house, and so much more. So you can learn more about these upcoming classes now from me at synchronicityuniversity.com, link in the description below. Myoastrology.com has an incredible all-star event coming up later this month. This is very special. I feel so privileged to be part of such an esteemed group. And and with the code NAD, NAD50, you can get 50% off enrollment. And so enrollment is just 99 pounds, which is unheard of for these incredible lineup of speakers, for such an incredible lineup of speakers rather. And I hope that you will join us. So check out the link in the description below. Myoastrology.com is where the party is gonna be taking place. They've got multiple stream, they've got class passes, uh, and access to classes that if you can't attend live, you can watch the replay and so much more at myoastrology.com and you can get my take on your unique birth chart by checking out my partnership with cosmogram with cosmogram you get a printout you go onto their website you enter in your birth data within hours they send you a pdf copy uh, of your chart and my explanation of the different aspects that are playing out there the different planetary positions if you go onto their website you can actually see a sample reading so you know exactly what it is that you're going to get and thank you for all the the incredible feedback that this particular report has gotten also know that there are discount codes regularly available on the cosmogram website itself so you can utilize that get a further discount and i hope you absolutely love it and cherish it always and thank you it is very warm here <laughs> i'm indoors but i'm in puerto vallarta and my ac isn't working they're supposed to come this week to fix it so i had to take breaks and i don't know if you can tell but yes <laughs> it is warm here and i'm feeling it but i'm just so grateful i'm grateful for this moment with you I hope that you use this week well. That Mars-Neptune square can be challenging for some people out there, but we absolutely can tap into it to our advantage in some way. And that way is observation, really is what it comes down to. Observe your mind, observe your energy, decide how you're gonna focus it, and you will be empowered that much more. And thank you, just thank you for being a friend and a fan and a superstar and watching and all of that. I send you massive hugs of gratitude and I look forward to continuing to spending this time with you next week and even more, right? We always have fun together. I know I am so grateful that you are part of my sacred journey and that you see me as some part of yours. Thank you. Thank you again. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.